As of mid-March 2020, the SARS-CoV-2 virus has spread to all continents, and over 100 nations are working to respond to this pandemic. Public health agencies and leaderships around the globe have issued guidance and restrictions. In each country, the healthcare sector, and in particular, the clinical laboratory infrastructure, was caught off guard. Global supply chains are now frozen, and we are seeing long lines of patients and healthcare workers who want to be tested or need to be tested. For the laboratory, disaster conditions like the COVID-19 epidemic can severely disrupt the functioning of the laboratory and cause unpredictable human, material, technological, and economic effects. While laboratories have experience in planning for natural disasters, the COVID-19 is a disaster of many levels and challenges us to think out of the box. A lab should plan and create a list of tests that it must perform under any circumstances and a separate list of tests that can be suspended or for the time being sent out. This list may prove to be a beneficial guide for allocation of resources during a crisis. For essential testing services, the laboratory can allocate disproportionately more resources and maintain a more extensive buffer stock. The laboratory should inventory all consumables and instruments and work with their strategic IVD partners to assess for vulnerabilities to the continuity of operations. During moments of crisis of unprecedented or unexpected magnitude, members of the leadership may not be available for decision-making and needed approvals. The laboratory leadership should identify and authorize others for critical decision-making. Clear communication is the key to keeping the laboratory and its external partners aligned. This is characterized by use of correct terms, up-to-date information, and clear expectations. Ensuring the safety of lab staff and maintenance of critical instrumentation is paramount. If conditions are not conducive to safe operations or instrumentation has been damaged, the lab may need to shut down or scale back operations. Check the status of communication by making sure that information technology networks, including phone lines, middleware, lab information systems, and electronic medical records are still functioning. In times of crisis, a lab needs to make swift decisions and act both internally and externally. Often, decision-making can be impaired, and thus it is important to establish a core crisis management and a separate communication group. The after-effects for the majority of disasters are often not apparent in the period immediately following it. It is prudent to think through best-case as well as worst-case scenarios and start planning for both. A lab may need to start considering alternatives, such as conserving capacity by decentralizing instrumentation from external sites, or go the opposite way by centralizing. In times of extreme duress, our minds are focused on taking care of the immediate issue or problem. Often we miss an opportunity to identify another weakness that is one or two steps downstream. The COVID-19 pandemic teaches us that the only certainty about disasters is that they are unpredictable. The traditional risk assessment and risk remediation frameworks work best for predictable issues that occur with some predictable frequency. Therefore, organizations need to create robust and interconnected BCMS frameworks so that they can continue to support each other through global disasters.